Are you guys facing an issue where your furnace continues to move air around your house, but the temperature inside the house continues to decrease over time? And it doesn't sound like your burners are actually going. Well, that is a pretty common issue, and I'll show you how to troubleshoot that and how to test the two different switches, like this limit switch here, temperature limit switch, and also a flame rollout switch. Those are the two switches that could be the source of your issue. I'll show you how to troubleshoot those, how to find them, and then how to get your furnace back up and running. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about normal operation. So before you jump into troubleshooting, it's good to know what is expected if everything's working correctly. What are the steps involved for your furnace to start up and start moving hot air around your house? And it should also be said, not all makes and models are gonna operate exactly the same, but they're pretty close to what you're gonna see here. Now for your reference, this is a 25 year old Armstrong unit, but overall the operation is gonna be pretty similar to yours. So let's go through the steps. So now you have your baseline of normal operation. When everything's working well, what are those steps? When the inducer turns on, then you get your igniter, burners turn on, and then eventually your blower fan turns on. Now the timing of that video, I was, I was kind of speeding some things up. Just know my unit takes about 60 seconds to go through that full cycle from the inducer fan turning on to the blower fan turning on. So that's 60 seconds on my model. Again, it can vary across the different makes and models. So jumping into the problem of a blower fan blowing air around your house, but that air is not being heated. So your house gradually cools down 62, 60, 58, 55. And that is because your burners are not turning on and it's not pushing heat through your heat exchanger and then heating that air as it forces through the unit. Jumping into troubleshooting now, first things that I would check, your furnace filter. Make sure your furnace filter is clean and it's new and it's allowing air to move through your unit and allowing that heat to actually be pushed through your ductwork opposed to just sitting in this unit, which can cause one of your limit switches to, to trip and cause this exact issue. But we'll dive a little more into that in a few minutes. It's best practice when working inside your furnace to go ahead and flip the power switch that's located off the side of your furnace or close to your furnace that will cut all power going to the unit. That's gonna protect you, but it's also gonna protect your circuit board inside the unit so you don't create more damage. And then depending on your unit, you should have some helpful in information on the back side of your access doors. So here, because this is about a 25 year old unit, the only thing I really have is a connector diagram in a, in a wiring schematic. Now, if you don't have a ton of experience with wiring schematics, they can be a little overwhelming, but just take your time, try to find the switches or components you're looking for. They will give you wire colors. They will show you the connectors that you're looking for. Are you looking for a six pin connector, a four pin connector? It will outline the circuit board. So you can really trace things down and, and pretty easily start to go through your troubleshooting. Additionally, my unit doesn't have a diagnostic LED to give you the diagnostic code or what's going wrong, but many units do. And for instance, I had this exact issue the other day where I had the blower fan running all the time and it was a code 33. So the way that I read that out is the LED would flash rapidly three times, space slow three times. So it was a code 33. I looked on the back of my door, I had a pamphlet, I could cross reference the diagnostic code and it let me know that I had a temperature limit switch issue or just a limit switch issue or limit open. There's a few different wordings for the same thing and that just indicates that there's something going on temperature wise where it's above the design threshold. So it's shutting the unit down in terms of the burners. It'll shut the gas valve down 
and it's just gonna blow air through your unit to try to cool off the unit. So that is your failure mode, right? Your blower fan's going, it's pushing air through the unit because your circuit board's saying, hey, I have an upper temperature threshold that's been broken, so I'm gonna move air through this, cool things down, and then get back on the right track. So let's dive in and look at the two different switches that are actually wired in series that can cause this issue and how to fix those. So focusing in on the first type of switch you're looking at, it would be your flame rollout switch. And this is going to detect if you have heat buildup from flames rolling out of your heat exchanger. So you should have clean blue flames pulled through your heat exchanger. If you were getting lazy flames and, and flames to start backing out of the burners, that would be detected by your flame rollout. And that is why your unit would shut down is because that can cause damage and honestly be a safety issue. And then the second type of switch that is actually wired in series with the flame rollout is a temperature limit switch. So here is another one that does the same thing. It's just a slightly different model. And you can see it has a surface here that detects temperature inside the unit. So that would have an upper threshold limit. This one specifically, you can see it says L185F-40. So what that means is you, one, want to match your bolt pattern, and then it's an 185 degrees Fahrenheit upper threshold limit. So at 185 degrees Fahrenheit, this switch would change from a normally closed to an open state. And then it would not close until it reached 145 degrees Fahrenheit, thus the dash 40. So it has a 40 degree Fahrenheit difference between when it opens up to when it would close again. So these two switches work together. They're wired in series. So you can see a white wire is going up to the flame rollout. It passes a white wire back down to the limit switch. And then for this older unit, actually two wires coming out of the other side of the limit switch. And that's because one wire is going directly to the gas valve. So the gas valve would shut down in an open state. And then the other wire, the red wire is going down to the connector down here. So then it can pass both the white and red down to your circuit board. Usually, any units that are relatively new, you, you would not have an additional wire going to your gas valve because the circuit board would do all of the work. Now let's look how to test these. One, you're gonna need a multimeter and you're going to need to turn it to the resistance and have your audible alarm on because we're gonna check for continuity. So I have an example flame rollout switch here. One thing to note, the quickest troubleshooting on some of these switches is they serve as like a circuit breaker. When the flame rollout goes above its threshold limit, which can be 250 degrees Fahrenheit to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, this can pop. So all you would need to do is try to press that back in to reset it and then see if that fixes your issue. But do pay close attention to your furnace because if you keep getting repeated issues where your flame rollout's tripping, well, that obviously indicates a much larger issue. So testing these is very straightforward. All I'm gonna do is put an alligator clip on one side, alligator clip on the other side, and you should hear your audible beep, which indicates continuity. Now this switch has actually failed. I just swapped this out. I think it got damaged. You can see the dents here on the surface where it was reading out intermittently. So I would get it back up and running, everything was good, but then I would go back to the state where my blower would just run and my burner would not turn on because this switch would read out closed sometimes would go to an open state and then that would go into the safety mode where the blower is just running and your burners will not turn on bad thing is that was on a rehab project it is winter out so that can be a bad situation if we're not over at the project for a bit now we can do that same test right on that limit switch remember the power is off so i'm just gonna take off the spade connectors I still have my multimeter checking for continuity. So I'll just click my alligators on. And that should be a closed state. 
Now, if this switch went over 230 degrees Fahrenheit, because that is the design of this specific switch, then that would go to an open state and it would not close again to the design of the switch until 200 because this is a 230F-30. So it has to reduce 30 degrees for it to close again. Now, if both the flame rollout switch or switch is, because you can have multiple, most units nowadays have two and some even have three. If those all check out closed, they all check out closed, the button in the middle is not tripped, your temperature limit switch checks out closed, no issue. Then I usually go down to the actual board itself in the connector where both of those wires are coming back in. For me, this white wire and this red wire are what I would wanna check continuity across. So again, with the multimeter set to continuity, and I should have told you, you do wanna test it. Make sure when you touch these two probes that you have continuity so you know your multimeter is working correctly. So I'm gonna to want to test across number one here and then number six. Okay, so all the way back at the circuit board, now I know I'm getting the correct continuity check. My switches are closed, which are as expected. And I would expect the furnace at this point to run correctly. Now, if you have an open, so if your switches are closed, all your switches are checking out and you have an open here, check to make sure the pins inside your connectors are not backed out trace the wires all the way back through and try to isolate if there's any damage anywhere. And that might be the cause of your issue because it actually is creating that open circuit within the wiring itself. Hopefully that helped you guys out. Let me know down in the comments, where did you find your issue? Was it with the flame rollout switch? Was it with the temperature limit switch? Was it with pins backed out of connectors, damaged wires? Let me know in the comments, or if it's not working for you, let me know if you need a little help. Now, if you found that you have a failed rollout switch or a temperature limit switch, I got mine from supplyhouse.com. Some of them are on Amazon. You can usually find some type of identifier or model number on these. And the critical thing for limit switches we talked about was that upper threshold. So whether it's 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and then that band, whether it's 40 degrees or 30 degrees. So when I needed a replacement for this, it was a 185F-40, and I just made sure then also my bolt patterns matched up. You can usually get those shipped in two days or even overnighted to get you back up and running. And then finally, as you saw, a multimeter is a critical tool when you're gonna be troubleshooting like this. If you need a little bit more information, check out this video right here, and I'll go through the basics of how to use a multimeter which comes in super handy with multiple projects around the house. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.